Hi, this is a short video explaining the phases of the moon. When we look at the moon in the sky, we don't always see it having the same shape. Sometimes it's a crescent, a quarter moon, a gibbous moon, the full moon, and then going with the waning phases, so the waning gibbous moon, last quarter, waning crescent, and then we would be back to new moon, which is actually when we don't see it at all. But how can we explain those changes? Now, of course, the moon is always all there. It's always a sphere, but it doesn't appear to have the same shape because not all of it is lit. So there are some basic concepts we need to understand um, to fully grasp, grasp how the phases of the moon are caused. Um, and the first one is that the moon doesn't shine on its own. It shines by reflecting sunlight. And just like any object facing the sun, half the moon is always lit and half of it is in the dark. So let's have a look at this drawing here. Um, this is a drawing and it is not to scale. The moon would need to be quite a bit further away from the earth, um, but uh, if that was the case in this drawing, we wouldn't see it well. So we put it bigger and closer. Um, so the sun is very far in the background. And as you can see, the earth is here. So half the earth is lit, half the earth is in the, is in the dark. So this is nighttime on the earth, daytime on the earth. Same thing for the moon. Daytime on the moon, nighttime on the moon. And we've put eight moons, obviously there's only one moon around the earth, but to explain the, the main phases, then it's just easier to put it in eight different places in its orbit. As the earth, sorry, as the moon goes around the earth, then we don't see the same fraction of the lit, lit side. And that's what causes the phases of the moon. Um, so let's have a look at that in a bit more details. Now here we've added the view from the earth. So we have the outside perspective with the three celestial bodies and we have the view from Earth when the moon is in this position. To understand that this, um, this is where the moon needs to be to see this phase on the moon, it's a bit tricky. You have to really visualize in 3D. So if you picture yourself on the Earth here and you look up in the sky, when the moon is here, you would see a thin crescent. Now as the moon keeps going in its orbit, a few days later, you would see a first, the first quarter moon. You would see half of the lit part uh, when it is here. Then a bit later, you would see more of the lit, fraction, of lit part of the moon, so it would be a gibbous moon. And eventually, you would see the full moon, so the, the lit part, the lit half of the moon is facing the Earth completely. Then if we keep going, this is a, again a little bit tricky because you really have to visualize how, if you look on Earth, if you're on Earth and you look at this moon, you would actually see the left side of the moon that's lit. This is what we see here. Again, here you would see the left side, so the left quarter, the last quarter moon, and then crescent, and then it would be back to new moon. New moon is actually when we're facing the dark part of the moon, so we don't see it at all. And in fact, because it's up during the daytime, you can see it's pretty much in line with the sun, um, then we actually see a blue sky. Um, so we don't see the new moon in the sky. So this cycle repeats every 29.5 days, so sometimes we say 30 days, and it just keeps going. It's a cycle, so there's no beginning, there's no end. Sometimes we use the new moon as our reference to begin the cycle, but really it doesn't matter. You could pick any moon or any time of the month to be your starting point for the cycle. Now how does that affect what we see at different times of the day, though? As you can see here, um, we have some blue skies in the background behind the crescent moons, and even the last quarter a little bit, the full moon have put more of a dark sky, but it means that these moons can actually be seen during the daytime. And this is confusing for some people. Sometimes people imagine they can only see the moon at nighttime, but that's not the case at all. The moon is up in the daytime as much as it is during the nighttime, except that the phases are smaller and they're harder to notice compared to the background sky. And of course, when it's close to new moon, then we don't see it at all because we're facing the dark side of the moon. So um, let's add this little person here. Um, so this person here um, is on Earth, obviously, and this blue line represents the horizon. So anything that's above here, this person would see in the sky, and anything that's below, well, it's below the ground, we don't see. So it really represents the horizon, just like we have all around us. So when the person is here, this person can't see the sun. The sun is right under the horizon, so it's around midnight, middle of the night, so it, that this person would be able to see the full moon quite high in the sky, if this was of the time of the month when it's full moon. And this person could also see the gibbous moons. So there are many phases of the moon that can be seen at night. Now let's see what happens during the day. So this person is now on the lit side of the earth. Um, so it's daytime, middle of the day, facing the sun. 
And you can see that all these moons here are above the horizon. So depending on where the moon would be on that day, um, if it is in one of those phases, then it could be seen in the sky. Now let's have a look at one of the middle positions a little bit. So this would be around sunset. So if you imagine the horizon here extending quite a bit further, then it would just be right after the sun would go down under the horizon. It would be right after sunset. And we could see all these phases here. And in fact, since most of us would observe the sky in the evening instead of early morning, when it is a waxing crescent in the first quarter and the gibbous moon, then it's a really good time to observe the moon in the evening. We can see it well, and from night to night we can see the changes in the sky. So observing right after sunset, when the moon is on this, it's on this side of its orbit, then it's actually a very good view. So this video is just a short introduction to the phase of the moon, just to give you a quick understanding of how it works. Um, to understand it better, it really helps to model the whole thing in 3D, go outside and observe the moon, and after a while it becomes easier to really visualize how it works. Thank you.